I'm Tracy Martins, and thank you for joining me for another episode of YQG in Bloom. Now, today's going to be a little different than usual. I have three lovely ladies from three different businesses here, and we are going to talk about women's health. We're going to get down deep, dirty with it, and anything that you've been wondering, we're going to probably talk about it and make a few of us blush. I have next to me, Adriana Rajowski from Enlightened Yoga. I, and over there, I have Donna Rivard from Wellness by the Water and also Jennifer Lang from USANA Health Sciences. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. It's great Thank to be you. back. Oh, it's awesome. I'm so glad we were able to do this. Now, it's taken us a while to be able to get back into the swing of things. And last time we talked about intentions. And as you can see, my intentions did not happen as of yet. Did you guys keep your New Year's intentions? Go ahead, Adriana. Um, I I think I am. I think I'm doing a really good job at my intentions really were about trying to take myself first, choose myself first and to do more things that aligned with what I needed on a soul level to make me happy, to bring me joy. So I am, I'm, I think I'm, I'm doing that oh, slowly, but surely. Well, I want to thank Tracy for having us back. Um, we had a great time. I think it was January that we yes. were here. So yeah, it's been a few months. Um, as mm -hmm. for uh, my intentions, um, yeah, I think, I mean, you fall off, you get back on. But for any of you out there that um, made your intentions and maybe have fallen off and are still looking to get back on, every day is a new day. So help yourself and get back on that wagon. Awesome. Well, Intentions are something, I, I like it better than resolutions. I yes. know we came up with intentions because resolutions generally uh, set up people to fail. So we definitely wanted to have something that was more realistic, manageable, measurable. The whole self-care chat that we had the last time, I've definitely implemented some of those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, as moms and wives and daughters, and you know, we take on the weight of the world and sometimes we, we don't put ourselves first. So it's really important to have that balance. So, and just like Donna said, you took the words right out of my mouth. Every day's a new day to start over. So even if you have a bad day, you know, wipe it clean and start fresh the next day. Yeah. And I should change mine. I have kept some of my intentions because I'm still trying things outside of my comfort zone and trying to make a little bit of me time and get back into different stuff that I enjoy as well. It's just hard for my weight intentions, but that also goes along with what we're going to be talking about today or part of it, which is hormones. And I'm at the age where menopause has hit and unfortunately so has the weight and everything that's gone along with it. Now, I know Donna, you know a lot about hormones. Explain to me how those go hand in hand. Well, they are different for everyone, Tracy, and mm -hmm. uh, I hope you don't feel like you're the only one out there because oh, I gosh, think no. every woman, um, and it doesn't matter what age group, and here even at this table, I think we're all going to have a different experience that we could talk about when it mm -hmm. comes about uh, to hormones. When we're little, uh, you know, when we first start getting our menstrual cycles, of course, the hormones, we're trying to adjust to hormones. And then as we progress through into menopause, then all of a sudden we're losing our hormones. <laughs> so it's to get the balance to try to figure out where you're at. Um, and I think we are going to get into a little bit more details about our personal struggles and where we all are today. But nutrition is very, very important, as well as exercise, as well as making sure you're on the right supplements. Every woman is, is going to be a little bit different mm -hmm. and getting hormones tested, I think, is the key to most people. I mean, you need to know where you're at, where your baselines are. And again, it doesn't matter what age you're going to start this baseline at, but you need to get a baseline. We really have to listen to our bodies and our bodies speak volumes to us. I'm 53, but let's say in your 30s and you're starting to feel a little off there's nothing that says that you can't be going into menopause early or there could be a yeah. change or an imbalance that might need to be adjusted each year our bodies are doing way different things than what they did last year exactly exactly yeah. as 
people, you need to know the different types of hormones. I mean, there's the reproductive hormones, which I think everyone is very familiar with, your estrogen, our progesterone, and testosterone. You should, again, know what those levels are, but we also have adrenal hormones, right? And that's where our cortisol comes into effect. And a cortisol with high stress, you can end up with adrenal fatigue. It does happen. Your adrenals get fatigued when you get stressed and overtired and overworked. Your adrenals are very uh, weakened. And then you have your thyroid hormones as well. And your thyroid plays a, an important role on both your adrenals and your reproductive hormones. So I know I'm going to repeat this a lot, but I think every person should have their hormones checked, whether it's once a year, um, and there's different tests for that. Um, I know I've done a Dutch test, which is called the dried urine test, which you pretty much have to get through a natural path. And I, they're roughly around $300, I believe. But I think it's an investment that every woman should make, mm -hmm. again, to get your baselines and then work with that natural path to try to figure out how to get you at the levels that you should be. Because when your hormones start to fall, whatever hormone it is, you are going to feel off. So you, you said it perfectly, uh, Tracy. When you start feeling off, there's something going on with your body that you need to look. The feel-good hormone, uh, which is progesterone, if you're not feeling that good positive self, then chances are that's low. Your sex drive. Now all of a sudden you're just like well, just, care less if you had sex or not. Yeah. And well, your testosterone's low. Just going to uh, my gynecologist not too long ago and finding out about the seizures that are hormone based due to the menopause is I never knew that when women go into PMS and into their periods, your progesterone drops really low. And that's why you get all of those symptoms and side effects that you normally wouldn't have. And that's what can also cause the issues that I'm having. But I had no idea that women had the testosterone issues. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, women don't want to have too much. I mean, because then you'll have more of the male characteristics, so to speak, but you need testosterone, you need estrogen, you need progesterone, you need a good adrenal, um, and you need your thyroid har mm -hmm. hormones. And Jen, you are the perfect one to talk to regarding supplements because everybody should be having supplements, but women, we should be having extra ones that are designed specifically for us. At different times of our lives, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people know that uh, during pregnancy, it's a time where, you know, women are strongly encouraged to take supplements because you're you're growing and building a, a body. You're responsible for nourishing that body. And, you know, diet is so, so important. And I know Donna and I are on the same page about that when it comes to, you know, the importance of a healthy diet. Um, there is no substitution for that. So when somebody says, oh, Jen, I'll just take your supplements and I can basically eat whatever I want. Well, supplements are there to help support healthy lifestyle choices. It's not uh, a substitute for it. Mm -hmm. um, it does enhance the benefits of eating well. And uh, when it comes to taking supplements, I mean, everyone should start with a standard multivitamin. Really important. There's a lot of trace uh, minerals in there that we don't get from our diets, depending on uh, what type of foods you eat, if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian. So you have to you have to really look at what your lifestyle is like and also uh, what supplements supplements might be beneficial for you. And uh, we do actually carry a women specific peri menopause menopause product. I, I don't have any personal experience with it just yet, although I'm really knocking on the door. I'm 45. I'm going to be 46 at the end of this year. And uh, many of my female uh, customers who have been using our Estro Pro product in their 50s, mid 50s, some some are already in menopause, some are not. I know I'm definitely in, in perimenopause because I'm still menstruating regularly. So, you know, there's different stages that we go through and you need support at, at different times. So it's recommended anybody 40 and older, but 
some women experiment or experience um, hot flashes and and all kinds of things as early as their 30s. I know Mm -hmm. if you want to have a good look at what you might be expecting, take a look at your mom, your grandma, your sister, your cousins, you know, any anything in your gene pool. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I've followed uh, in my mom's footsteps in in a lot of respects when it comes to digestive issues. I know my sister and I both have similar circumstances there. So hereditary factors can also play uh, a big part as well. And then we have the youngest one in the group, Adriana. Actually, no. No? No. I, I turned 46 in April. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I just said 46. <laughs> Okay, uh, we know what's on her 46. mind today. <laughs> I had no idea. Okay, I... Yes, 46, so well, I'm actually... you. Yeah, I'm not the, the youngest. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Close. Have you been knocking on the door yet to menopause? Um, you know, for me, something that I am noticing a lot of is waking up in sweats. Um, throughout the night and, and it actually comes on and off. So it's always a little bit different. Like it's not an ongoing situation, but let's say for example, I'm going through stress or sometimes I'm not even going through stress. And I find myself that, yes, I actually have to have literally a change of clothes available (laughs) for me next to my bed. And it's funny because it's like, it's completely pitch dark and I'll just, I just know where they are and I just kind of reach for them and I get myself all changed and I just, I'll go to the washroom and just dump them into the into the tub because it's literally what I have to do. So I am experiencing a little bit of that. And, you know, I'm also experiencing things such as just with working out and exercise and how different it is for me right now Mm -hmm. um, and how different it was for me, uh, you know, even a couple of years ago. Like I was just mentioning to my husband that getting what you want or what your intentions are in your 40s it's very different from when you're before your 40s um i i kind of have a joke that mother nature for my birthday every year gives me something i don't want (laughs) um so you know it's it's a lot harder to get to where you want to be or even to maintain where you were at it's like almost impossible Oh, so. it, it's true. Like, okay, this year I could eat a small fry from McDonald's and I would be completely fine. Mm-hmm. But say next year, I'll probably gain a pound or two or I'll retain water or... Absolutely. It, it just seems that every year from the time you hit 30, yes, something changes. Yeah. You know, um, I have struggled with gluten and with dairy for, uh, for a very long time. I'm not allergic to it. I just have a very high sensitivity to it. Mm-hmm. But it seems like after I had London, my son, it, it all just heightened. Like... It, where it was forgiving before and I would just get like a minor bloating or, you know, having to have to run to the bathroom, something like that. Now it's at a level where I'm literally, if I have gluten or if I have dairy, but gluten especially, I'm on the floor. My stomach looks like I'm seven months pregnant. Uh, I'm in pain. I get severe pain in my abdominal area, in my intestines. And it's just, it's not pleasant. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Well, that, you know. that's another thing. Like you said, when you had your son, I was 23 going on 24 when I had my son. But after I had had him, because I've always had really bad periods. So I was put on birth control when I was in grade nine, just so that I could survive a month without having migraines or being in bed. But once I had my son, I couldn't go back on the pill. We tried everything. It screwed up my hormones so much that I couldn't take any form of birth control because it it would just knock me for a loop. Yeah, I think it's just not just as you're getting older, but Mm -hmm. childbirth will do it as well. Mm -hmm. And just levels of exhaustion. Like we talk about health, uh, you know, but health is so... Uh, encompassing like we you can't just think about physical health there's so many more components to it and um, we're in that area in our 40s women in our 40s in your 40s are really looking at life very differently from when we were in our 30s Yes, and I'm definitely in that 50 range. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess I hadn't mentioned, but I've had a full hysterectomy, full um, medically, uh, for medical reasons, uh, probably 
gosh, I was trying to figure out exactly how long ago it was, but it's been at least seven or eight years that I, I had, and I don't have any hormones per se, or at least my body isn't really producing the hormones uh, the way they should be uh, producing hormones. So that's a whole nother ball game for, uh, for people um, who are in that situation that have had full hysterectomies. So again, I know we're at a wide range here of coming into menopause, perimenopause, me in full menopause. Yeah. And as I'd mentioned, every woman is going to be that little bit different um, and focusing on good nutrition. I think nowadays people get so caught up in the word healthy or all natural. The marketing campaigns that go on in this country, um, countries, I guess, with us getting so much of the U.S. marketing as well. Mm -hmm. People don't really look at what they're eating. They just want that, again, that easy button. And people need to get, uh, I think, a good base going in their diets, which includes eating and I have to keep repeating myself, real food. Mm -hmm. I run a real food program and the real food is exactly that. It is food that you would grow, food that you're going to, it includes meat. I, I don't just offer vegetarian or vegan um, options, but you need to eat real food. Yeah. You need to stay away from the processed foods. These are all sugar, pro highly processed foods, canola oils, all your seed oils, mm. they are disrupting hormones in women tremendously. Um, people who are gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant um, and dairy, of course, you're going to eliminate some of those foods. But people who don't have those sensitivities don't not eat gluten just because you think your friend doesn't eat gluten and they think that that's the healthy thing to do. If you can tolerate gluten, then eat gluten. Exactly. If you can tolerate some dairy, eat some dairy. But make sure, again, you are doing good quality food when it comes to dairy products. Exactly. Especially with the big farming industry, of course, that we all know that goes on and all the hormones and the things that they put into um, animals and, and food. Make sure you know what you're actually, where your dairy is co coming from. Make sure your food's organic. We all know as you get older, it's harder to get the weight off. Your body is more sensitive and the bloating is real. It's not that hard to eat healthy to have good quality food and you can go off and have a burger here and there if you want just make sure that it's not all the time and then we're going to lose the most important part of us which adriana wanted to talk about is our sex drive um yes so actually i have a personal experience that i want to share and um so after i had my son london and i'm sure that i'm relating to a lot of moms out there I really, uh, you know, y you become so exhausted with everything and a lot of us are not sleeping. We're not functioning well. We don't have time to exercise properly. You know, I'm a huge, huge like proponent of, of healthy eating and literally like my household does not have processed sugar and I make sure that we have tons of vegetables, tons of fruit. Um, you know, we do eat organic meat. I just, I believe in health and I believe in good diet and I believe in a great lifestyle. I believe in movement and all of those things became really, really hard for me. Mm -hmm. Um, when I had London, partially because I wasn't sleeping. I mean, he was waking me up five times during the night and this went on for some years and you know then you have stress and like donna was talking about the uh, cortisol levels in your body it's such a nasty situation because it all compounds and compiles and your and it all is this vicious cycle that you move into it's almost like a hand in hand situation where 
you, as a new mother, for example, and I'm using that just as an example, but, you know, of course, m p women that don't have uh, children, but have other stresses, we all go through the same stuff. Stress is horrible. What I'm saying is that with that load of stress, we really truly start to lose ourselves and lose that desire to want to have intimacy with our partner. Um, and that's kind of what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I was just very, very exhausted. Um, I found myself putting, you know, my husband and intimacy on the back burner. And I really had to start working on it. It's kind of like, you know, that saying, um, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's just like any other muscle, okay? Like you do need to use your vagina, like use it because you're going to <laughs> lose it and Will you know it sag like the rest of our bodies you know i hope not because there's a lot of help for that and there is yoga and i mean movement and breathing exercises and all of that amazing 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 stuff but you know i'm a yogi and i've been a yogi for now for 26 27 years and so i really like part of my healing journey was really starting to get back into yoga and, and getting back into meditation and getting back into breathing breathing. But Donna mentioned hormones and, um, or speaking about her favorite hormones and my favorite hormones, for example, um, is, well, I love dopamine and I love endorphins, but I really, really love oxytocin. Now, oxytocin <laughs> to me is like a true uh, make you feel really good, happy hormone. Um, it's associated with the bonding of mother and child. It's associated with uh, sexual arousal, um, sense of belonging and sense of trust. And you can help yourself um, in many different ways. For example, sexual stimulation, foreplay, there's been studies that show that levels of oxytocin are heightened, elevated during intercourse, during an orgasm especially. And actually, as a matter of fact, about a minute after vaginal contractions, you are producing the highest levels of oxytocin. So that incredible hormone of truly feeling good, like sex with your partner, sex with yourself, you know, have an orgasm a day. Like people say, okay, Jen is going to laugh at me right now because I know <laughs> she's dying to do this. Um, you know, there's a saying and you'll know. So here, here's a new one. Um, an orgasm a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> you know, like an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but now we're going to switch it. So yeah, I think it's just, it's, you know, for me, it was starting to get back into myself. And as my son started um, getting a little bit older, and honestly, I have to say this, and this is like such an honest um, confession, I guess. And my, all my girlfriends know this and my, my, you know, my, my girls know this because we talk about this, like it was seven years for me, my son right now is almost 10 years old. And it was seven years of me being in this state of where I just didn't feel like having sex. I didn't want to have sex. Like I would say to my husband, like, really, my list is this big mm -hmm. and you're at the bottom. Sorry. And it's not just me. I know that it's not just me. And it's within the last three years that I really started coming back to myself. And part of it was through yoga, through pelvic exercises, through breathing exercises. I mean, rhythmic breathing during sex helps you to actually increase the potential, the, the, the ability to have an orgasm. And as we um, all know, and or maybe we all don't know, but now you will, um, a woman is able to orgasm, to have multiple orgasms. So breathing is really, really, really important. The movement of the pelvis is really important and yoga um, can really help. And this is why I started creating programs for women on my website, um, enlightenedyoga.ca, um, that are curated towards individual needs. It's called elite, uh, membership. And basically I help women to really come back to that state of knowing how to breathe as they are moving their pelvis and, and just having that rhythm with their partner or with themselves, you know? So, um, 
that's kind of, that was my journey of getting out of it. And now I feel even better than I did seven years ago, mm-hmm. or I should say almost 10 years ago, but it was a seven year um, journey that it was just really, truly like down in the dumps. Like I could care less. I could care less about sex. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I was just exhausted. And then something in me just clicked and I thought, my God, this is so wrong. Like this is one of the healthiest ways to create health and and like great energy within the body and the energy of creativity as a feminine um, aspect of that. So it really takes a lot of work. You're not alone. There is many, many women that are going through that, many different walks of life. And I think that we just need to really start talking about it because it's, it is a very vulnerable place. But I feel like if we don't open our mouth, then we all have these questions and we don't know. And it's all different women from different walks of life that I just started talking to, you know, and, and yes, like I, I love talking about it right now. Like the orgasm. Yay. <laughs> well, it's a, it, honestly, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. I mean, whether you have just had kids, whether you're perimenopausal, whether you're menopausal, hormones, it takes everything in us to fight them or to keep them, but you feel bad. You feel depressed when they're off kilter. You don't feel like having sex everything, even getting out of bed is a job. And like you said, with the hot flashes, I had the weight gain from getting older and having a hard time getting the weight off. But as soon as I started getting the hot flashes, I called my gynecologist and I said, give me some pills because summer is coming and there's no way I'm going through that with the extra weight and the heat. And that's when I started. And that was before I knew that I actually needed the, the estrogen and the progesterone for the, for the epilepsy, which by the way, women, you can get epilepsy from menopause. I am one that found that one out two years ago when I started going into menopause and that's the joy of hormones. And so now it's a struggle to try and get my life back. And right now I am trying really hard to uh, get my eating under control. I meal prepped for two weeks because I had 50% off (laughs) HelloFresh. So I ordered two weeks worth of food, all the healthy choices, all the good choices. I I was thinking of Donna in my head when I was going (laughs) through the list of the foods going, okay, this is a healthy carb because we're so trained on low calorie, low carbs that there are healthy carbs. And I know you, you're huge on that. So I was going through the list of the foods and I know they do have good foods. They can be pricey. So as soon as I got that 50% off, it's like, and also trying to get my supplements in order, which they are, I take an arm's length worth of supplements. And now I got to get into the movement because the depression, the lack of sex drive, the whole thing. It's just, it's not fun. Well, and there's so many other things I think that women go through as well. I mean, they just lose their sexuality a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't feel as sexy because they've started to put on some weight. You got the wrinkles. Right. Or as we age, things start falling or start Mm -hmm. drooping. And there's so many things that... I guess are against us, but women just need to, I think, feel good in their own skin. And once you feel good about yourself, no matter how you look, because you have to look at yourself from the inside out um, to be able to really dig down and, and deal with whatever you are dealing with. Eating healthy, exercising, those things are, are definitely going to help, but you need to be able to sit with yourself and know yourself. And I loved Adriana saying, you know, about women having to pleasure themselves. I mean, as a child, the first thing a kid learns to do is to stick that finger up their nose, right? Or little boys <laughs> like to find their little penises and they start playing and (laughs) as we get older I mean you lose that right all of a sudden it was like don't touch that don't do that don't pick your nose don't do this but most kids could tell you if I needed somebody to pick 
my nose, I could probably tell them exactly how to go up there and get that booger and pick it out. And I know this sounds really gross, but how many women can tell a man exactly how to pleasure themselves? Because if you don't know how to do it, Mm -hmm. how are you going to be able to explain it to someone else? And as we age, dryness, I'm going to put it out there. Mm -hmm. We all start losing that that lubrication. lubrication. <laughs> okay. That and lubrication. I'm going to stop you right there in case there are any men listening, which I doubt by now there are. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> we are the dry ones because we're old, older, right. getting there. So, But we definitely want to, there are things that you can do to, to make it lubricated and women shouldn't feel bad about needing lubrication, mm-hmm. especially as we get old. Estradiol is a good cream that can be used. Again, you want to go see a naturopath or someone to be able to um, prescribe that. But there's also an aloe vera. Uh, it's like a little uh, tablet or a suppository kind of deal. It's aloe vera, actually, that you could um, use. But you need that because you can't have an orgasm if you are dried up and tight. Are we talking about now having an orgasm with a man or or a partner, I should say, or by yourself? Because spit is a wonderful lubricant. (laughs) But also there are some... (laughs) uh, All natural. (laughs) But there are some like KY jellies. A lot of people, they don't like the oil based they do make water based as well so exactly. if people don't want to go if they want to just go to the drugstore you can get water based lubricant if you don't feel like spitting on yourself you know I, I do have to comment about something because I think one of the beauties like one of the great things about being in my 40s you're so much more vocal we like find our voices you, yeah <laughs> like you have the maturity and the ability to express exactly what you want when you want it how you want it and all of those things and it's important to have this communication like communication is important talk to the vagina <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean I think when I was younger, I was shy to express it. And I'm sure that, you know, I'm, I'm talking probably, you know, just based on me, but yes, you're, you're correct. Like there is so many women out there that don't have that voice and are scared to have that opinion or to say something due to different things, different reasons. But, oh my God, like just have the conversation, just talk about it. Just while you're doing it, just start talking about it because you're denying yourself like a, an incredible experience, then you're the one that, that's losing out. You're missing out. Nobody else is. Oh, I mean, your partner is too, but you know. But you can mm-hmm. also guide them, yeah, yes. show them, yes. put their hands there or physically show them, put on a show for them. They'll probably really enjoy watching you showing them <laughs> how they should not shouldn't be doing it. And I've noticed that a lot of people don't realize that you, you've said it earlier that you can have multiple orgasms. Absolutely. And I think when you're younger, it's harder to do that because you're just still figuring your own body out and you figure, okay, one orgasm, I'm done, let's go and we're done. And you can keep going and keep going and having a sex. Actually, a second orgasm is stronger than the first one. I always call the first one the starter. That, that gets you going. And you, just yeah, that second teaser. one. It's the teaser. Yeah. So getting back to uh, the hormones definitely play the, the key role. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we have to learn how to increase them, how to support them by food, by supplements, by movement, movement breathing. and breathing. Because how many of us sit in our head when we possibly are in that moment and your head starts going? And as soon as your head starts going. Oh, forget it. You're done. Nothing else works. (laughs) Well, you can't be thinking about your grocery list in the middle of, you know. Oh, my God. That's horrible. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yes. Yes. Eggs. (laughs) Eggs. <laughs> no. And there's lots of foods that can help uh, with that as well. There's even cookbooks out there to increase libido and all the, all that fun stuff. So a lot um, of it is do exploring. Do you know what food can increase our libido? Um, I will get back to you on that. I honestly <laughs> do not. I mean, licorice is a good uh, tea or a good supplement. Oysters. 
Oysters. oysters. Well, of course, mm-hmm. oysters. <laughs> I don't I, like oysters. No, no, I don't either. Oh, my goodness. We have a table full of ladies. Oh, no, 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 oysters. no. I love oysters. Oh, okay. No, I mm-hmm. love oysters. You know, I raised the, the conversation with my daughter not that long ago. And I said, honey, you don't have to feel embarrassed to talk to me about this. I mean, I know I'm your mom, but if you can't come to me to talk about this stuff, you know, who can you go to besides your girlfriends? And they're in the same boat that you are. So, you know, they, they say there there is wisdom in talking to your elders about things that you haven't experienced yet. And uh, how did that you know, conversation as, go? It actually went really well. We're very different um personality types Mm -hmm. like she's much more reserved I'm kind of a little bit more out there so you know first I approached her about just talking about it and she was open to it and I mean I think it's important because I wish my mom would have had some of those conversations with me when I was you know in my early 20s so it's important education is important learning like you said knowing your body listening to your body and uh, not being ashamed of enjoying pleasure and orgasms and sex and all those things because there's nothing wrong with it. It's healthy. It's important. It's needed at all ages, not just, you know, as, as we age. And there's so many things that change for us. I mean, we didn't touch on this uh, tonight, but as we were having our discussion, hormones, most definitely metabolism changes dramatically as we age as well. So you know, weight gain and things like that, you know, our metabolisms change as we get older. So we have to help them along a little bit and make better choices and, and do things to help stimulate our metabolism versus, you know, dealing with the sluggish type of of metabolism that we have. And it takes time to reset your metabolism. I know I did it. It took me about five weeks. I was never somebody who really ate breakfast. Mm -hmm. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I get that now because it kind of sets you up for your entire day. Once I started eating breakfast, amazing the balance I had back in my life, not waiting until, you know, living on coffee and then having lunch around noon or whatever it was. It's, it's important to do many things mm. to, you know, stimulate and, yeah. and keep you healthy. And metabolism is a big one. And, and we fight with it at all different stages of our lives. Too. It's true. And I'm going to go back to something that Donna said before is we have to love ourselves from the inside out. And as you get older, that is really hard to do because I was always one. I was cute. I was tiny. I was petite. I like a hundred pounds soaking wet. And as you get older and your body changes and things start to sag, you start to get the gray hairs and gray hairs in all areas, which nobody tells you growing up until that scares the bejesus out of you and that pops up. You got to come to terms with the fact that even though I don't feel like I'm almost 53 my body is almost 53 and that's where my issue is is trying to get the mental state up so I'm trying with the with the vitamins and with somewhat eating better and I keep talking about movement more and I'm gonna have to talk to Adriana more about oh that my God, I would love to. but Can't I wait. did I just did a 10 day uh, challenge and found out first of all that I don't drink enough water which that is huge and you don't huge, you huge. don't realize it is um, a friend of mine she has a, a health and wellness thing and she had me try the 10 day challenge and it's like 10 liters of water or 10 cups of water i thought i drank a lot of water and it till i actually measured it and it's like i'm not even drinking a quarter of it no wonder I'm eating like a pig and I'm always feeling like I'm hungry. I'm always feeling blah because I wasn't drinking enough yeah. and just increasing the water intake. I'm still not at the 10 cups, but my skin is looking a lot better. It is a lot clearer, but I'm also not as hungry. So I'm finding that a little bit more movement stuff is starting to come off because I've increased the water. And water helps flush out your system too. Yep. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was given an example once and it's a little bit graphic, but have you ever tried to flush a toilet that doesn't have any water in it? It doesn't work all that well. <laughs> so when you oh, think I of our bodies, yes. you know, how important it is for, for water to help flush out, you know, toxins and just rejuvenate your cells. And, you know, water is, is so important that um, 
until you start measuring it, I was doing the same thing, Tracy, and I thought I was doing pretty good until I really started to look at it and go, oh, you know, I'm definitely lacking in some areas. Mm -hmm. And just increasing your water can do so much for your body in, in a very positive way. And I think it's easy to try to do 10 cups. Just always keep a bottle full around you. And if yep. you don't like plain water, because a lot of people don't like the taste of plain water. Add I lemon. Add, add lime. Exactly. Yeah. Give yourself some I citrus have a soda in there. Stream, so I... I carbonate it a little bit and yeah. I find that helps. I yeah. can't carbonate because uh, digestive issues, but also I will blow it up like crazy. But I enjoy water now, but I know a lot of people that don't. So I'm like, give everybody examples like lemon, lime and cucumber. I'll throw that all in at once. Sometimes yeah. I'll add mint if I've oh, had I mint in my garden. Mint. Yeah. Strawberry and basil is yeah. really oh, good. Strawberry, water. blueberry and basil is good. You're also getting vitamins. Oh my gosh, ginger. Exactly. Yes. Ginger. Mm -hmm. There was ginger and lemon. I mean, yeah. and you know, it's it's actually not very hard. You just get like a organic ginger. Mm -hmm. You take a chunk, like maybe just like a little chunk like this, and I literally just drop it into my cup. I boil water. I pour over the ginger. Like, of course you peel it first. And then I put some lemon and then I just add, um, you know, like cold water to it so that I can drink it. And then ginger like infused in there. And I keep the ginger in the cup the whole entire day. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps infusing my water. And I mean, I literally like from 930 in the morning until 630, sometimes even eight o'clock, I either teach yoga or I do treatments. And so imagine if I did not drink water because, oh my God, I'm in a treatment. No, all of my clients know, like I, my jug is right there. I'm always drinking water. It really truly is a fountain of youth. Well, and our skin being our biggest organ, mm -hmm. I mean, you want water to keep it um, elastic. Yeah. I mean, you will reduce the wrinkles as we age. So yes, the more ladies. hydrated we are, the younger we look. Exactly. Well, <laughs> drink your water. Yeah. And something really important is, um, last episode we were talking, we were discussing, uh, the fascia. So your connective tissue, mm -hmm. your connective tissue, your fascia is actually made up of water, collagen, and elastin. Like if you don't have proper hydration, and proper elasticity within the fibers, your body's not going to have the ability to actually create that water flow within all the organs and flashing out the system and all that stuff. So water really is important for your connective tissue, for the elasticity, for the maintenance of, um, you know, that youthfulness uh, within your skin. I forgot earlier, I do want to ask you if there are any really good exercises, simple exercises to help with our pelvis and with movement down in our vaginal area to keep everything, like you said, firm, elastic. Oh my God. Uh, so right away off the top of my, the easiest, the most simple thing to do is, okay, this is, this is kind of silly, but I swear this is amazing. Okay. So if you were to just find your breath, and I guess I'm going to demonstrate a little bit. You're not going to be able to see my pelvis, but that's okay. You'll get the flow. Um, so basically, you know, let's say that you're sitting on a chair and um, you're listening, put on a music, like put on a song that you really love, get in tuned with your breath, but your breathing is going to become a little bit more rhythmic. So like, let's say that you're um, listening to a song and it has a nice beat to it, right? Okay. So what you would do is just rock your pelvis back and forth. So it's very, the, it's the movement of the pelvic floor, really. I mean, that rocking back and forth, back and forth to the rhythm of the music and then bringing in, incorporating a breath to it. I'm just going to so, have an orgasm doing that. <laughs> yeah, and you should. <laughs> I like that kind of <laughs> Depending on where you are. But honestly, Depending on what she's you sitting know, on. <laughs> that, but this is the thing, like, you, you know, if you're thinking of like the simplest thing that you can do, everybody can sit on a chair, sit on a chair, start rocking your pelvis so that you can feel the pelvic floor. It's like you're literally pelvic tilting and then pelvic thrusting. So if you look at my hand with your pelvis, you would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you would incorporate a breath to it. So for example, okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here we go. Okay, people are either going to laugh at me right now, but that's okay. Because I make fun of myself. I'm all kind time. of feeling like Meg <laughs> Ryan here. <laughs> but no, you know, it's it's just movement to your pelvis. I mean, listen, this is like, okay, so we're speaking about water. Your pelvis holds the most of the water out of the whole entire system. It's in your pelvic bowl, right? Like your organs, your intestines, that's where you hold most of the water. We can talk about chakras, but just very briefly, your second chakra, it's creating that buoyancy, creating that movement and incorporating just very subtle breathing to it. It's the simplest thing that you can do. If you were to do that every single day and just for one song, so like at three minutes long or like four minutes long, you could really increase your ability to get in touch and in tune with your pelvic floor, with your vaginal wall, with all of all of that goodness that you possess right there and just keeping it stimulated. Keep it stimulated, keep it going, keep it flowing, keep it moving, keep it, keep it breathing. Because again, if mm-hmm. you don't use it, you really do tend to just not be in touch with it at all. So get in touch with it in like the smallest of ways. What about Kegels? Oh my God. Well, yes, of course. (laughs) Those are good things. (laughs) You know, there is also, I mean, there's so many things that women can do. Like, I'm not sure um, if you ladies have heard of like the vaginal eggs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. Excuse me. I I went mm -hmm, a little too fast. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's, it's strengthening the walls of your vagina, um, of your uterus, like create strength. Kegel exercises are wonderful. Doing any kind of mula bandhas, which are yogic uh, locks that have to do with creating that suctioning. And uh, again, like that movement, those locks really help to get everything secreted, tightened up right into the abdomen. I mean, we think of ab- like abdominal health and abdominal strengthening. It's not just from the outside. It's through the uterus that you can actually strengthen your core. I mean, th- there is incredible exercises that you can do that have to do with that. It doesn't all have to be just, you know, abdominal crunches and like planks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like it's tightening up through the bandhas, through the logs to get the juices going. Oh, and then. And that energy flow in. And then it might help you to feel better or at least oh get you in the mood. Yes. I know I'm kind of now. <laughs> like, what time is it? Are we done yet? <laughs> this has been great. The amount of information, hopefully people have been listening and listening to the entire episode because every single one of you guys has given us a lot of tools to bring home on top of going to see your doctor and getting your blood tested or getting any type of tests for your hormones to see where what stage your body's in nutrition vitamins exercise and it all will help with your mood it'll help with your sexuality and get you more in touch with yourself to help you transition into this new form of form of life stage of life whatever you want to call it Mm -hmm. but making sure that you stay in touch with your body we have I can't say that enough and Jen I do want to segue over to you and you're the perfect example of staying in touch with your body and how important it is at at an early age um, to go for screening to go for different tests. I know we've been talking a lot about hormones tonight, but um, I just went through breast cancer. Fortunately, it was found very early. Mm -hmm. I had a double mastectomy in May and mindset has been the, I think the biggest part of this whole journey for me because I've stayed positive throughout all the dark times. I was a crier before breast cancer, so. (laughs) Um, But please, ladies, if you're listening, go for your mammograms. I just happened to be one of the lucky ones that started screening at age 40. 
Mm-hmm. And somewhere between 42 and 44 is when DCIS showed up for me. And 85% of breast cancers start in the milk ducts. Mm-hmm. So there was no lump. There was no signs. Wow. It was just a routine. Hey, you know, I've, I've always been a very preventative person. Mm-hmm. So going for tests, doing all of those things, you know, knowledge is power. And sometimes, you know, you, you don't want to know the answers to those questions. And fortunately, because we've been talking about hormones, my cancer was not hormone positive. So one really good benefit for me, I didn't have to go on an aggressive hormone therapy. Um, I didn't require chemo or radiation because the mastectomy actually was the treatment for me. So at 45, never thought I would be facing that. But um, my experience has definitely opened the conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many of my girlfriends have gone for mammograms that have never been for one? Well, my aunt, it's been probably about eight years since she had breast cancer and it was just the size of a pea. So she did the lumpectomy and everything else was fine. She went through the right radiation, but luckily my doctor said, okay, that's the ant on your mother's side. So you're going for a mammogram every year just to be on the safe side. But I also do have my gynecologist helps do the breast exams because I have lumpy breasts. So there's no way I would know if there's a lump or not. And that's common. Lumpy breasts is very common. So it's something that you should become knowledgeable with your breasts, with the lumps that you already have in them. But if they hurt, if it feels weird, if it feels different, go to your doctor, your gynecologist. When you have your pap test every year, have them check your breasts and check your lymph nodes in in your armpits. Yep. And, and I was I was fortunate enough that it had not spread. It remained non-invasive. Lymph nodes were removed and biopsied. And I'm I'm one of the very, very lucky ones. So I'm going to be advocating for early detection and screening for the rest of my days. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Well, and women have to, I mean, not even just breast, I mean, um, uterine mm-hmm. cancer, Ovarian, ovarian, them, yes. every kind of uh, test. And even when you've had a full hysterectomy like me, I still have a, a yearly appointment with my doctor. Of course, I don't have to get a pap smear because I don't have a uterus anymore, but um, I still get the breast screens and blood tests. So yes, so yeah. all, all women should be following and having yearly checkups yes. and making sure that prevention is high on there. Well, when I was, I think I was 28 and I went for my yearly because my mom, she had a hysterectomy. They found I had a pap test came back and it it was bad. And they had said it was stage three dysplasia, stage four is cervical cancer. So my best advice, and I've said it so many times, I'm going to keep saying it is listen to your body and advocate for yourself and if so you, important so if, important if you know that there is something wrong and you're not getting the answers or the treatment that you want you find somebody that will help you and will listen yeah yep. and we'll listen and all of us here we've had various issues at various stages of our life and now we're all coming to the same point of our lives where nutrition and movement and sexual health and supplementation supplementation and just mindset well mindset is so big yes it's really easy to go to the dark places when you're facing something really serious well they always it takes work it takes work to stay positive and they always say that you know 50 is the new 40 i'm still trying to buy into that but eventually it's going to get there so we need to all stay positive and keep the lines of communication open about all of this and stop just hiding behind it and saying, oh, I have menopause or, you know, the weight gain is because I'm older. It's not embarrassing. Right. Yeah. And people don't have to accept that as an or use that as an excuse because um, not you don't have to be overweight when you go into menopause, no. sure, it is and can be a side effect. You don't have to own that. That doesn't have to be who you are. If you want to change it, it may take some work for sure. 
and there are lots of people that that can help and guide but everyone has to accept who they are and move forward because I think a lot of people can't lose weight or can't move on to the next stage of their life because of what's in here and in here and they they just need to look at themselves in a different light exactly and honestly these three women are great support systems if you need any type of help whether it's your mindset whether it's mental physical if you need help with mobility and movement whether it is your body your pelvic you need to talk to adriana at enlightened yoga she will help you be able to move a little bit better and make things a little easier. Then we have Donna Rivard from Wellness by the Water, who is there to help you learn how to eat healthy, eat whole food, eat good food. Real food. Real, Real food. food. <laughs> Real food. Stick See? to the outside of the grocery store. Exactly. Avoid the middle. <laughs> <laughs> She is there and she will make sure that you stay on track and will help you out. And we also have Jennifer Lang from USANA and she will set you up with the supplements that you need to start you off on this journey to better health, wellness, and also talk to your doctors, talk to your friends, talk to your family, whoever you need to talk to, to move on to the next stages of your life. Thank you girls so much for being here with me. Today. I just have a couple of quick closing remarks. Yes. Um, now that I'm learning my new body, my modified body, I have to say I have not missed wearing a bra once in nine weeks because today's actually my nine week uh, anniversary of my post-op treatment. I feel very empowered by what I went through in the last six, seven months. Good. And I look at my scars with pride and I'm, I'm very grateful. And I'm grateful to all of you women too for just being in my network and being in my sphere. And I've learned a lot from all three of you throughout the course of our, our partnership and, and just working together. So we're, we're many pieces of the puzzle <laughs> and uh, I, I love being able to work with the three of you. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. Hey, like they say, it takes a village. It sure Not does. Not just to raise a kid, but to be a woman. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So thank Thanks, you. Tracy. Thank you. And again, my name is Tracy Martins. I want to thank you so much for joining us for YQG and Bloom. You guys have a great day. Mm -hmm.